On this, there's a seed value that's equal for all the residuals. This now is set up properly. And uh, there is no path between these items in a factor. There's no connection between these. Because the connection is here in the factor. So the confirmatory factor analysis is using this idea of the shared communalities, that exploratory factor analysis we touched on yesterday. And it's saying all the sharedness is here. So I don't need to add extra sharedness here. And if you wanted to add the sharedness, you couldn't have, you could have a regression from here to here. But then you're saying that this belongs here and is belongs to this, which is no longer your simple structure of these things all have something in common. Now you could do that. But you would have to have a really damn good explanation for why ticks belongs to here and here and why these other ones don't go under there. And then you're doing a very fancy dance and no one will believe you. Or no one should believe you. The other thing people do, and Barbara Byrne is guilty of this, she'll say, well, actually, Ticks and stickers are really very similar. So let's correlate those two items on the residual. And it will improve fit. Because you're sucking up extra variance. You're putting that variance that exists in the data into your model. So it will improve the fit. But conceptually, it's a nonsense. Because the sharedness is here not here, okay? When you see people correlating residuals, be very, 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 very doubtful. The last resort of the desperate. And, uh, are there any cases when we have to correlate the residuals? Yes. I'll draw a picture because that's easier for me. Time one. Time two, time three. Item, 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 item. Repeated measure. This item one has something in common with item one at time two. And item one at time two has something in common with item three because it's the same item. And so you can correlate the residuals in a repeated measures across time context to capture the fact that this is repeated. Does that make sense? And uh, what does it mean when we correlate the residuals? It means we're identifying that the variance of this item is shares something with the variance of this item. That's all of the correlated residual means, is that the unexplained variance, because this is the explained variance, the unexplained variance has something in common with the unexplained variance because it's the same item. And that's considered legitimate in a repeated measures exercise. So how, how different would it be from just adding a factor, a LA factor? Uh, except for the added parameters. What would the extra latent factor be? Uh, the commonality of items that's not covered by time. So you have to have a factor for item one, a factor for item two? Yeah, a factor for... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it gets really messy. Why? Well, because now you've got to say... Sorry. Well, yeah, now, if I understood what you're saying... What I understood you saying is item yeah. one, item two, item three, one, 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 one. Is this what you meant? Yeah. Well, now for every item I have to add another factor. And if I have ten items, now I've added ten other latent things. I've made my model much more complicated. 
than simply saying this item influences this item. So conceptually, it would be the same, but it's mathematically it's different. Well, mathematically, it would be different. Conceptually, it's awkward and clumsy, and, and we'll talk more about latent curve modeling on Friday. But I wouldn't recommend doing it because you're going to add a lot of latent factors, which will really complicate, increase the degrees of freedom in the model, and it'll do all sorts of weird things to your estimations. There is another time when correlating residuals is necessary. Let me turn this screen so everyone can see it. If you have, let's say you have two factors and you want them to predict something else, And you have uh, let's say this is uh, T one A, T one B, this is T one T two A, this is T two B, and you actually want to show do these things predict themselves at a later time? At the start, they're correlated. You cannot add the correlation here until you put the residual and you put the correlation on the residual. To allow latent or manifest variables to be correlated in an endogenous position, the correlation has to be expressed on the residual. This is exogenous, it's the beginning. Endogenous means, like it says, endo, within the model, it's at the end, or in the middle of the model, it's not at the beginning. Exo, meaning out. Your word for exit in Russian has the word exo in it, like from Greek, exodus. So, if you're going to put these two in a dependent position and you want to show the correlation, the correlation has to go on the covariance. Sorry, on the residual. Otherwise, you can't correlate them. And you know they're correlated. They're supposed to be correlated. Time one was correlated. Why can't time two be correlated? Well, it can't be because it's in endogenous position, but you insert the, the residual, you can correlate the residuals and you'll get the same number. So those are the only times that, as far as I'm concerned, it's legitimate to have correlated residuals. Otherwise, don't do it. Stay away. Once you're sure that the model is admissible, there's no negative error variances, there's no correlations greater than one, and that all paths are statistically significant. Then you look at the weights and the path directions of each path to make sure I can explain this. Um, question. Um, you say no correlation greater than one. Is it possible that correlation is greater than one? Mathematically, yes. Conceptually, theoretically, realistically, not allowed. But it can happen the machine doesn't know that you can't have more than 100%. The machine doesn't know that. <laughs> Only the human knows. 100% is, well, you, well, you can't have more than 100%. It's like when the machine says you that, have, that you have negative dispersion or something like that. Nev negative? Negative dispersion. Uh, variance. variance. Variance, yeah. That's out. Well, this, this will cause that. This will be a way. If you see this, you have to think there's something wrong here. There's a negative error variant somewhere hiding that I can't see or didn't notice. But as far as the machine is concerned, a number is a number. So wh wh when I get the negative variance, it means that there are some mass incompletions, yes? No, there's no problem with the computations. The problem is your model has been specified wrongly. That's what it means. 
it's a clear indication that your model is misspecified. You've said there are two factors when actually in the data it's only one factor. You've said that this predicts that and this predicts it and now we are explaining 100%. That just can't be allowed. So the negative variance is a indicator of uh, uh, misfit. Can I say like that? Yeah, except it's actually stronger than misfit. Oh yeah, it's it's like it's exactly. illegal, inadmissible. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. You know, you're bang, you're fired. <laughs> That's what it means. It's extreme misfit. Yes, very very extreme misfit. Misfit is just feels so inadequate to describe. Oh, okay. That no, you cannot go forward. Go back and start again. And the model is wrong. And it means that we have to change our yeah. model. You have to diagnose and fix the specifications of your model. Your model is wrong. Absolutely, definitively you're not allowed to proceed. So, and um, it is not the question of uh, the estimation, uh, the, the map of estimation or something like that. Well, that the, the, may... The only, the only one reason is that our initial model is not... Okay, uh, so, it may mean you used the wrong estimator. It may mean you added a path when you shouldn't have. It may mean that your you've introduced a factor that doesn't really exist. It may mean it's fixable by changing something, but it does tell you you cannot use this solution even if it's a good one. This solution that we just gave you is wrong, illegal, do not use it, do not pass go. Okay, uh, I mean that, uh, okay, I, I, I got it. I know that this solution is wrong. But what if, for example, if I change some estimator, something like that, but the model is the same? Uh, can I do this? Or? Maybe, but I would be... I, I suspect that that is not going to solve the problem. My suspicion, my experience says, no, that doesn't really fix things. What really fixes things is making your model correctly specified. So. This is one of the things we do. This is, these are Amos screenshots, but the logic is the same. So the first thing that Amos always shows you is the notes for the group. The model is recursive. There's no warnings. Good. So always look for warnings first. And R is beautiful. It puts the warnings in red. So you can see, oh, shoot, I saw a red. What was that? So this is how the model was specified. It says there's one factor predicting one, two, three, four, five, six other factors. That's a hierarchical model, and we'll talk more about those later. The other thing that I like to do is make sure I've kept paths that are statistically significant. And this is a standard output. It says there's a path. This predicts that. It tells me that this is the estimate, this is the standard error, the critical ratio, and the p-value. And all of these paths are statistically significant. If a, you have a path in your model that's not statistically significant, it's telling you there is no difference between the number I just found and zero. So why don't you make it zero? Right? And how do you know this is 123 and 49? 489 is 3.961. That's now a z value. The p value of 3.96 is much less than 0 0.001. So that's why it's three stars. And of course, we can't estimate this because that was the one we set as the seed value. You told me it's one. What do you mean you want me to estimate it? Right? I can't estimate it. It's, you told me it's one. The variance explained in Amos, you can switch it on, and in Levan, you can get R square value, and that's this how much is explained. 44 times 44 is 19. That's all that does. Where this becomes really interesting is if you have 
multiple predictors for each item, which is a contradiction because we said we want simple structure, but sometimes we create the thing called a bi-factor model, where we say there's a general and there's specific factors, and so you would have two factors. In a structural equation model, you might have factor A predicts A, but so does factor B predict B. So now I've got two correlated predictors, so suddenly the variance explained is not just this squared plus this squared, because this is, has some shared variance. So the machine works out the true R squared value for you, which tells you, am I making, is my model explaining a lot or not very much? If we follow the principles of exploratory factor analysis, we want these numbers to be pretty big. So I see 58, okay, 54, 41, 48, uh, and 44. Yeah, you know, they're all over 0.4. Isn't the minus uh, before 40? Yeah. So uh, the more that goes up, the more this one goes down. And it's okay, the negative uh, is. Sure. Because it's the number shows the strength, the sign shows the direction. What it means is if this goes up, that one will go down. Some people will say, well the solution to that is reverse score yeah. that. And I will do that. Huh. And uh, what how I do this or not? Of course you can do it. And in Jamovi kind of it will warn you, this item looks like it's negatively worded. Do you want us to convert it for you? So uh, some people will do it, but I can go, well, I'm a better reasonable brain. I can explain that to anybody who wants to read it. That when you have an increase of this, that one will go down, the other four will go up because they're logically opposite. But they share variants. They belong together. Can you explain the residual uh, from the factor? I mean, uh, as I understand the uh, factor, it's like a shared variance, and uh, where we can find the noise when we just uh, constructed this factor, this shared variance. Um, I'm not following what you're asking. It, this, in this situation, there is a predictor of the factor, which has a loading of negative 28, and therefore 8% of this factor is explained by whatever this is. But generally, in a correlated model, they just exist together. Nothing is explaining it. There's no variance explained. In a correlated model, the factors don't have any of the variance explained. The factors are explaining the variance in the items but nothing's explaining the factors. So you have to have a model where you say, I have three factors here that are explained by something else. Then you would get a variance explained of the factor. So it depends on the design of your model. Is that answering your question? Cohen, 1992, says, look at the r square value convert it to an f square using that formula and this is how you can interpret them. f square will be 35 if r square is about 25, 26. I've said enough, let's play. So, this is what I got when I ran a CFA of the six factor Jamovi, six, uh, sorry, the eight factor model of the SCOA. We've done exploratory, so we're going to switch this on. So, I'm going to be switching backwards and forwards between the presentation notes and Jamovi. So, let's do this together. Where's, where's your Jamovi? Which did you say? 
This is the NZ SCOA VI. And, whoops, if I do this, I don't want to look at the data. I want to look here. Um, right. This is the page you need to find in the outputs, and it'll automatically show you the syntax that I created in Jamovi. So it's the NZ SCOA VI Moscow. Dot OMV. Oh, dot OMV. Exactly. It's about one word I know, and I use it all the time. <laughs> Do you have it? No. no. Did I? Not yet? Oh, did you not get this file? Huh. Uh, data files. Oh, okay. How about that? All right. In which case, then. Uh, If you don't have this in the output of NZSCOA VI Moscow, if you don't have that file, then fine, then you can create, create it. It's not, not hard. Leonid thinks it's there, but I didn't see it either, so maybe Leonid will come around. To create a factor, obviously you're going to switch on factor, confirmatory factor analysis, and it'll have a default first factor. So you put a name in for the first factor. I'm lazy, CE. And then I grab CE, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I drag them over here, and it will automatically start doing CFA for that. And then underneath this first factor is a little blob that says Add new factor. Click on add new factor and create your new factors for the eight scales. It may take you a little time mm -hmm. unless you found the file that Leonid says he's found. What's that? It was not. No. <laughs> but I think it exists this file. Um, no. Yeah. Did you know this? The I Moscow, the, the Moscow, the Moscow one. I see it right now. Now. In the presentation, okay. when you opened the Dropbox. Oh, okay. It's in there. Okay, okay, that's okay. You have it both. Dropbox. Sorry. The same email. No, no more MV. Что здесь? А мне как картофель попал на это? Да, у меня все есть. А, значит, тебе повезло. У меня другого всего нет. Ну, это и без мозга. Нет, у меня не нашла полная она. Она без мозга. Я не знаю, что есть. We're creating eight factors correlated. Yes, I'll come to that. You have to create the eight factors first, unless you found it. And sometimes creating the eight factors is, it will make you glad that you don't have to write syntax in Lavana, which will come. But it's easier. <laughs> I think it's a pain in the gluteus, but he thinks it's easy. Can I ask you a question about... Go. Yes. Maxine. Yeah, this is about the seed value, because you usually use the first item. Yes. Okay, yes, for the part. There exists another option that you yes. make it free, but you make scale for the factor. Yes. I don't like that. Why not? Why? <laughs> okay. Because I think what, what it is more symmetrical. What you can do? Mm. But it's, it's here. 
to provide variance from the factor. Yeah, you say the whole factor will have a variance of one. I guess I like raw di rawer data than transform data. I like to keep the data as free as possible. Yeah, but after this, when you have f scores, it will be normally distributed across yes. the population. So okay, you're absolutely right. But, but I like to see. I think you're more likely to see if the model works this way. I, I like, and it's been the convention I've used all my life. And sometimes you get different results. And I pref I prefer. Okay, let's use this. It's possible to switch on what Maxine is saying, and 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 we'll come to that. I want to discuss that in a minute or two once everyone's got the eight factors set up. Um, can you scroll down uh, to, to, to look at uh, ticks on here? I'm sure it's the bulb that's not as bright as it used to be. Created the eight factors? No, still working on it. Fine. Okay, there are too many tables in the output. Yeah, that's all right. Some you will ignore and some you will can go, I don't need that switched off. Oh, I don't need that switched off. Right? So it's never too many because some people want to see it. Right? <laughs> Me, I'm, I'm, what's the point? It's like Winsters. No yeah. one knows all the statistics. <laughs> and the beauty yeah. of this, if you don't want to see it, you just don't click it on. You know, like oh, I don't care. I don't care. It's it's the power of the design of Jamobi makes it easier for you. I believe. So, creating factors is pretty simple and straightforward, right? Yeah, but name, the calculation is very long. Sorry? The calculation is very long. Oh, cal oh, really? Yeah. Oh, mine is, well, I have an i7 processor with a 16 gig RAM, so mine works very quickly. Sorry. But once it's done, you save, it'll save and you don't have to repeat it. It'll just be no, I just opened your file, so I decided not to put it in. 
<laughs> Does it have standardized uh, as, well, standardized what's called uh, factor loadings? Yes. Factor loadings, standardized estimate. Oh yeah. Because you know, oh, like which standardization does it use? Uh, which standardization they would use? They would use a standardization out of maximum likelihood estimation. So it's going from the loading. Uh, they're going.